At this point, iceberg videos have been done to death, to the point that there's even iceberg iceberg videos now. But you know what? They're fun to make, so I'm gonna do it anyway. This collection of entries is anything that's presumed to be part of a man-made mythos, whether it's ancient gods like Anubis, fantasy races like elves and fairies, and even some modern internet folklore like creepypastas. I thought the wide variety of stuff on this list and the way it's structured would make a unique rabbit hole to go down, so here we go. This iceberg comes from icebergcharts.com. Keep in mind that icebergs from this site are community-driven, and if the status is set to proposals wanted, then the creator is still actively updating the list with suggestions from other users. But I'll put a link to the list in the description if you want to follow along. Without further ado, let's dive into the mythological creatures and cryptids iceberg. As we know with these iceberg lists, the more commonly known stuff is at the beginning, and tier 1 here is filled with things that you've definitely heard of before, like vampires, headless horsemen, mermaids, that kind of thing. So we're just going to go ahead and skip to tier 2 of the list. You may still have heard of a few of these, but stick around because once we get further down the list, there's even stuff I haven't heard of, and that's saying something. The Ahul is a winged bat creature with an ape-like face that's said to be in the deep jungles of Java and in Indonesia. Its cry is literally Ahul, basically making it a Pokemon of your worst nightmare. It was spotted in 1925 by naturalist Dr. Ernest Bartles, who was exploring waterfalls at the time when it flew over his head. Dr. Bartles encountered this King Kong Zubat again in 1927 when it flew over his hut and screamed, Ahul! <coughs> Sorry. Bakus are Japanese supernatural beings that devour nightmares. It's said they were created from the spare pieces left over when the gods finished making all the other animals. The term Baku is also associated with the Malayan tapirs, and uh, this combination is actually what inspired the dream-eating Pokemon Drowsy. And that's two entries so far, and uh, two Pokemon references, so we're really showing our creativity here. Bloody Mary is the legend of a ghost that is summoned to reveal the future. The original ritual involves a young woman walking backwards up a flight of stairs while holding a candle and a hand mirror. The mirror was supposed to show a vision of the girl's future husband, but it could also show a skull or the image of a grim reaper, which would mean that the girl would die before marriage. Over the ages, the story turned into more of a horror story, with Mary basically always murdering anyone that summoned her. It uh, made it a popular sleepover activity though. It's thought that the legend originated from Mary I of England, who had 300 religious dissenters burned at the stake. That earned her the nickname Bloody Mary in the 1500s. I'm not sure where the cocktail comes in, though. The Bunny Man is an urban legend from Fairfax County, Virginia that started in the 1970s. Many versions of the legend exist, but the main focus here is that there's someone dressed in a bunny costume that attacks people with a hatchet near the Colchester overpass in Clifton, Virginia, which is now known as Bunny Man Bridge. The legend originates from two actual incidents. The first was when a couple who returned to their parked car after a football game had their front window smashed in by an unknown assailant, and after they drove off, they discovered a hatchet in their floorboard. The man reported that it looked like the attacker was wearing a white suit with rabbit ears. The second report happened 10 days later, when a security guard at a construction site happened upon a man wearing a bunny costume on the porch of an unfinished house, and he threatened him with an axe. There isn't much that goes after that story though, like you would think if a cop was threatened with an axe, he probably would deal with it, but uh, it didn't say. Over time, the stories combined and gained a life of their own as the Bunny Man stories. They have a ton of variations across Virginia now. But no matter what, it seems like that the Bunny Man has an axe to grind. The Bunyip is a cryptid from Aboriginal folklore in southeastern Australia. It's been mostly described as entirely aquatic, with no reports of it ever being sighted on land, but it can be found in rivers and swamps and things like that. The name and physical descriptions vary among the tribes, as there's at least nine variations of the creature that are documented. Sometimes it looks like a big cat, but other times it looks like that crazy tentacle thing that's an escape from the back rooms. The highest number of sightings were from the 1840s and 50s by European settlers, and they chalked up the sightings to it just being another weird-ass Australian creature that hasn't been documented yet. Champ is basically the North American version of the Loch Ness Monster, but it can be found in Lake Champlain, which is a lake that stretches from New York and Vermont up to Quebec, Canada. There's been over 300 reported sightings over the years, but the origin stretches back to an Iroquois Native American legend about giant sea serpents in the lake. The Dover Demon was a creature sighted multiple times over April 21st and 22nd of 1977 in Dover, Massachusetts. It was spotted by a 17-year-old and two 15-year-olds in different locations across the town. They all drew sketches of the creature, and the 17-year-old William Bartlett noted on his sketch, I, Bill Bartlett, swear on a stack of Bibles that I saw this creature. And you know if he had to write that, then, you know, he's definitely telling the truth. The case is often dismissed as a school vacation prank, or if the teens did see something, then it was most likely a snowy owl, which matches a lot of the characteristics of all of their descriptions. The next entry is Echidna, and I know what you're thinking, but no, this is not our boy Knuckles. 
This is sad. Echidna is a half-woman, half-snake monster that is the mate of Typhon, one of Greek mythology's deadliest beings. Echidna gave birth to many notable Greek creatures like Orthus, Cerberus, and the Hydra. I think her inclusion on this list is probably because she's kind of an overlooked figure in Greek legend. She has far too much lore to put in this video, so I'll just say to look into it if you're into Greek mythology at all. It's pretty cool. The Aramanthian boar is another creature from Greek mythology. It's a giant fearsome boar that roamed the wilds of Mount Aramanthos and was the fourth of the Twelve Labors of Hercules. And if you don't know, the Twelve Labors of Hercules was a series of quests given to him by King Eurystheus of Mycenae, who Hercules served at the time. Hercules was to capture the boar alive and bring it back to the king. And if I had to guess, he was probably out there slaying thousands of them just to level up. Eyeless Jack is the first creepypasta on today's list and was written in 2012. Jack Nyris was a 19-year-old college student who unwillingly befriended some cult members and was eventually put up as a human sacrifice. During the sacrifice, his eyes were removed and a mixture of blood and hot tar were poured into his empty sockets. The sacrifice failed and Jack was turned into like an eldritch horror style monster that is said to have an affinity for removing and eating his victim's kidneys. I guess failed sacrifices make you want to eat human kidneys, I don't know. Fiji mermaids are objects made by sewing the top half of a monkey to the back half of a fish to create a monstrous mermaid-like taxidermy. These things were presented at carnivals and sideshows since the 1800s, with a narrative that there are mummified bodies of mermaids found off the coast of Fiji. In essence, they were just made for general amusement, but there's really nothing amusing about this fucking thing, just look at it. The Flatwoods Monster is a creature from Braxton County, West Virginia that was spotted on September 12, 1952 by brothers Edward and Fred May, along with their friend Tommy Heyer. The boys were out that night and saw a brightly lit object in the sky, and then they saw it land on a farmer's property nearby. After telling several others about the incident, they all went over to the farm to check it out. At the top of a hill, the group saw a pulsing red light, and when one of them shined a flashlight in that direction, they saw a man-like figure with a round red face surrounded by a pointed hood-like shape. After investigations, it's thought that the light in the sky was due to a meteor that flew by the town that night, and the creature that was seen is nothing more than a barn owl, since it matches some of the descriptions that the creature had, like uh, it had a face like an ace of spades. It's always people from the northeast that see shit like this, the northerners don't seem to really know what the fucking owl is. The Goatman is a half-man, half-goat creature that is said to reside in the woods of Prince George's County, Maryland. It's mostly associated with disappearances and deaths of dogs, although most of these deaths can actually be attributed to the number of trains in the area. Like, a lot of these injuries always look like they've been hit by something, you know, with high speed or ran over. The Goatman has still earned its place in regional folklore, though, because many Maryland residents still trade stories of Goatman sightings. Harpies are bird persons from Greek and Roman mythology that are personifications of stormy winds. They're depicted as having the body of a bird and the head of a maiden. In writing, they're usually described as being grotesque. Look at it! It's ugly, isn't it? While pottery and other art like that has depicted them as being feathery dommy mommies. Their name translates to snatchers or swift robbers. And when a person suddenly disappeared, it's said that it was a harpy that carried them off. But sometimes, maybe that wasn't so bad. Jane the Killer is a character that would eventually pop up in the lore of probably the most popular creepypasta of all time, Jeff the Killer. Jane was a girl that lived in Jeff the Killer's neighborhood. Jeff captured her and killed her parents and friends before setting her and her house on fire. Jane survived, but she was severely disfigured. When she woke up in the hospital, she found a gift from Jeff that included a wigged white mask, a knife, and a black dress. After that, she swore to seek out and kill Jeff for what he did, which I get it. I'd probably be a little mad. Just a little mad about that. Julia refers to a sound that was recorded on March 1st, 1999 by the NOAA in the Pacific Ocean. It gets its name because the recording kinda sounds like a woman's voice that's underwater. I'll go ahead and just play the sound. This was a big deal at the time because misinformation was spread around the internet that claims that pictures were taken above from a NASA vessel that featured a large shadow in the water at the time of the recording, and that kind of implied that there may be something monstrous or supernatural that came from the sound. But that turned out to be a hoax, as there was no real pictures that were ever seen of that, and eventually they determined that the sound was just icebergs running aground outside of Antarctica. A kappa is a reptiloid creature in Japanese folklore. Kappas are known to be quite hostile towards humans if they're not respected, and have been known to drag people down into the water, drown them and eat them. And because of that, kappa have been used to ward children away from dangerous rivers and lakes. 
But Kappas are apparently known to love cucumbers and sumo wrestling, and one of the main goals of their attacks is to remove a person's shurikadama. What the fuck is that? Well, in Japanese folklore, there exists something in the human body called a shurikadama, which translates literally to small anus ball. There isn't a concrete answer on what exactly this is, but some say it's a human soul in physical form, and a kappa may want to steal it to become more powerful. So I guess you could just see a kappa in a lake just fisting somebody to try to steal their soul, and that's a pretty fun image. Kelpies are shape-shifting spirits in Irish and Scottish folklore that reside in lochs. They're usually seen as black horse-like beings, but can adopt human form as well, which brings a new meaning to the term horse girl. Most bodies of water in Scotland have a Kelpie story to go along with it, but the narrative seemed to simply exist as a cautionary tale to keep children out of the water, like the ass-eating kappa. Kitsune are fox spirits in Japanese folklore. Foxes lived together with humans in ancient Japan, and this gave rise to their legend. Kitsunes are able to bewitch people and can shapeshift into humans in other forms. As they get older, they can grow up to nine tails, and their supernatural abilities increase in power as well. In most stories, they're portrayed as faithful guardians and friends to humans, and uh, sometimes lovers. Lamia in early Greek stories was a queen of ancient Libya, and like so many others, had an affair with Zeus. After Zeus's wife Hera learned of this, she either kidnapped or killed all of Lamia's children. This drove Lamia mad, and she began to devour other children. Over time, her appearance changed to become more monstrous, with serpentine qualities, and in later stories, Lamia evolved into a phantom that seduced young men and ate them. Snake woman have the riz, I guess. More recently, though, she's used as a boogeyman-like figure that frightens kids into obeying their parents, which apparently, I guess, is half the cryptids on this list. Laughing Jack is another creepypasta villain on the list that looks like he was rejected from a My Chemical Romance audition. I also like that most of these creepypasta naming schemes are like Giggling Jimmy, Mike the Murderer, Filthy Frank, things like that. Jokes aside, I am glad that new stories like this and folklore are being created in this modern era of internet access. It gives a unique new quality to these stories that's kind of cool, and maybe one day Laughing Jack will be up there with Loki and Zeus, but probably not. Laughing Jack was created by a guardian angel that had the form of a jack-in-the-box and was sent to a boy named Isaac Grossman in the 1800s. Isaac grew up to become a vile serial killer of the worst kind, and Laughing Jack began to emulate Isaac's personality. Jack became devoid of all color he once had, and eventually escaped from his box, becoming a larger and more demonic version of himself. He tortured and killed Isaac in the same manner that Isaac did to his victims. After this, Laughing Jack went to other children posing as an imaginary friend, and would eventually murder them, stuff them with candy, and then trap their souls for eternity. The very same children he was originally designed to protect. The Loveland Frogman is a creature that was spotted in Loveland, Ohio in 1972 by police officer Ray Shockey. He was driving down Riverside Drive near the Little Miami River when the animal scurried across the road in front of his car. He said the creature was 3 to 4 feet long, 50 to 75 pounds, and was crouched like a frog before it stood up to climb over a guardrail down into the river. Two weeks later, another officer, Mark Matthews, saw a creature crouched along the same road that Shockey did. Matthews shot the animal though and recovered the body to show Shockey. According to the officers, it was a large iguana that was around three and a half feet tall, but they didn't immediately identify it as an iguana on Riverside Drive because it was missing its tail. Matthews later spoke about the incident to an urban legend book author and stated that the author omitted the part that confirmed the creature was an iguana. So despite being almost immediately debunked, it's been featured in a number of American folklore stories. The Manticore is a legendary creature from Old Persia that has the head of a human, the body of a lion, and the tail of a scorpion. In some stories, it has venomous barbs like porcupines, but it can launch them like arrows. It's said to swallow its victims whole and leave no bones behind. Stories of the beast were just so cool that it finally made its way into Greek and even medieval European stories and art. The Mokalei Mbembe, which is really just fun to say, is another water dweller on this list, and it supposedly lives in the Congo River Basin in Africa. Many of the descriptions of it kind of resemble a brontosaurus, and this led to many expeditions by creationists at the time in the early 20th century to go searching for it to try and contradict the theory of evolution by proving, I guess, that dinosaurs still roamed around. But more recently, it's thought that the local tales of Mokalei Mbembe were inspired by the black rhino, which is an animal that used to thrive in the area, but sadly are now critically endangered. Momo, or rather the Momo Challenge, was a hoax that was spread by news stations around the world that seemingly still had no idea what the internet was. Basically, news outlets in 2018 picked up on stories from YouTubers about children in South America and India getting WhatsApp messages from someone named Momo. Sorry, dude. Momo would compel kids to complete challenges that related to acts of violence or self-harm. Some reports would even say that children's YouTube content would just cut out mid-video and start playing evil messages from Momo to them. 
Despite months of news coverage with these supposed real incidents, there were never actually any evidence that substantiates any claims of Momo existing, or any evidence of anyone actually committing self-harm because of it. Even Kim Kardashian in 2019 made a post on Instagram pleading with YouTube to remove the non-existent Momo videos. The image that's associated with Momo is actually just a picture someone took of a sculpture that was made by a Japanese special effects company called Link Factory. The main artist, Aso Ayasawa, is aware of the challenge now, uh, but he doesn't like that his work is associated with stories of harming children, which, you know, I get it. The Mongolian death worm is a personal favorite on this list for me since it reminds me of Dune. The death worm is a creature that allegedly exists in the Gobi Desert of Mongolia. The legend of the worm states that it lives in the most arid and sandy regions of the desert and can kill its prey at a distance by spraying venom or even releasing an electric discharge like it's a fucking Pikachu or something. It lives and travels underground, but can be detected by the waves of sand it creates on the surface. But it turns out that these death worms are actually a case of mistaken identity. Tartar sand boas or desert sand boas are snakes that have thick and round heads and bodies that kind of blend together. So if you ran across one of these in the desert, you could actually mistake them for giant sandworms. It was big! It was all wiggly! In 1983, a sand boa was shown to the locals that claimed to have seen the death worm before, and they actually confirmed that this was the same animal that they saw. The Nemean lion is another creature from Greek mythology, and was the first labor of Hercules. Really, Hercules just kind of waltzed around Greece murdering all the elite animals? What a dick. The lion had golden fur that was impervious to most mortal weapons and attacks, but Hercules actually managed to stun the lion with his club, and then he strangled it to death with his bare hands. A dick, maybe, but definitely a chad. The night hag is a supernatural being that is associated with sleep paralysis, which is a phenomenon that a person may experience while falling asleep or waking up, where you're conscious but your body's completely paralyzed. Sleep paralysis can be brought on by a number of reasons, including genetics, psychological stress, or sleep deprivation, but it typically doesn't last for more than a few minutes. Almost every culture has their own version of a spirit or demon that causes sleep paralysis, but in Old English, it's where the term nightmare first originated. A mare is said to be a damned or cursed woman that unknowingly floats around in her sleep, sitting on the chests of local villagers, causing them to have sleep paralysis and bad dreams. Mare eventually evolved into the now general term nightmare, while the story of the creature evolved into the night hag. Looking back at Old English lore like this makes me think that maybe creepypastas aren't so uniquely stupid after all. The Ogopogo is another lake monster on our list, and it's said to live in the Okanagan Lake in British Columbia, Canada. Much like Champ mentioned earlier, the Ogopogo goes back to native lore of the area. They believed in a water spirit that lived in the lake, but when white settlers migrated to the area in the 1870s, the legend of the spirit turned into more of a creature feature, with sightings of a serpentine-like monster ever since. Writer and investigator Benjamin Radford seems to have an explanation for both versions, though. The lake spirit legend could have started with water spouts, which are actually pretty common on this lake due to the rapid dropping air temperatures, and it's suggested that the Ogopogo and other similar creatures in other Canadian lakes are actually otters swimming in a line. The way otters swim through water together kind of mimics the movements of what could look like a big serpent, especially if you spot them from afar. You could just see like five or six otters in a row. You just think it's a, just a big creature. Oni are Japanese yokai that kind of resemble trolls, ogres, things like that. They usually live in caves or mountainous areas, and some are said to have thunder and lightning powers. They're typically evil in nature, often menacing villages while murdering and cannibalizing each other. Looks like meat. Back on the menu, boys. <laughs> but modern stories about them have become a lot tamer since then. They're very popular in Japanese art and are often stock villains that appear in a lot of literature and fairy tales. The Rock is a Middle Eastern legendary bird that appears in fairy tales and sailor folklore, most notably in the story of Sinbad the Sailor. There's not really a whole lot to be said about this one. It's basically just a big old giant bird that was so big it could carry away elephants and destroy entire villages if you pissed it off. SCP-173 is a specific entry on the SCP Foundation website. Basically, it's a community-driven fiction website where users submit their own entries that involve the SCP universe, and it's mostly filled with eldritch horror-like creatures. SCP stands for Secure, Contain, Protect, and the overarching story is that the SCP is a secret organization that contains supernatural beings and items away from the public. SCP-173 is probably the most well-known creature, even if you didn't know it came from this website, and it's also one of the shorter and vaguer entries as well. I don't want to read the full thing here, but uh, here's a couple of interesting snippets so you can kind of get the idea. When personnel must enter SCP-173's container, no fewer than three may enter at any time, and the door is to be relocked behind them. The object cannot move while within a direct line of sight. Line of sight must not be broken at any time with SCP-173. Personnel assigned to enter the container are instructed to alert one another before blinking. 
personnel report sounds of scraping stone originating from within the container when no one else is present inside. This is considered normal, and any change in this behavior should be reported to the acting HMCL supervisor on duty. Spooky! But it's a pretty cool idea, so please check out their website if you're interested in that kind of thing at all. Skinwalkers are a native Navajo legend that is a type of witch that can turn into or possess animals. They typically represent the antithesis of everything that the Navajo stand for. Even though skinwalkers are popping up more in modern media, not a lot is really known about them due to the understandable reluctance of the Navajo to tell their stories to outsiders. Even the internet famous Skinwalker Ranch in Utah is mostly known for its UFO sightings more so than skinwalkers. Skunk Ape is literally just a Florida man version of Bigfoot that mostly lives in the swampy areas of Florida, South Georgia, and Alabama. There's been reports of the creature since European settlers first came to the area. Back in 1818, there were newspaper stories of a man-sized monkey raiding food storages and stalking fishermen, and regular sightings have occurred ever since. The most popular explanation for this, though, is that the sightings may be of a black bear suffering from the common skin disease mange, and that same explanation could also be applied to Bigfoot and things like that. The rake has become kind of an internal meme for me at this point, because if you're like me and enjoy really schlocky, paranormal-themed trash TV, then you may be familiar with the rake already, because I swear to God, in that show Paranormal Caught on Camera, they mentioned the rake, like, in every single fucking episode. The rake. The rake. The rake. The rake. The rake. The rake is a... The rake. The rake. The rake. The rake. The rake. The rake. The rake is a... The rake. The rake. The rake. The rake. The rake. It does look like a creature known as the rake. The rake is kind of an urban legend, kind of a creepypasta. It originated in 2005 on 4chan by a post titled, Hey B, let's make a new monster. And from there the lore was created. The rake is a pale humanoid creature that stalks and inflicts psychological trauma on its victims. They are said to reproduce like a vampiric xenomorph, French kissing you and releasing protozoans in your body, where it gestates and eventually becomes a full-sized rake. I guess we can also assume here that the human in question probably doesn't survive this process. The story also has a lot of similarities with already quote-unquote existing cryptids called crawlers, which supposedly have sightings all over northeastern United States, of course, making dramatic showings in front of trail cams. This man? What about this man? Nah man, this man right here. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then get ready for kind of a weird one. The story goes that this man appeared in thousands of people's dreams since the 1980s, but was only first reported in 2006 by a New York psychiatrist who had five patients that all described the same face in their dreams. A website was created by a man named Andrea Nutella, no not the chocolate paste, in 2008 called Ever Dream This Man, or rather thisman.org, to document the phenomena and to offer explanations ranging from the rational to the supernatural. Like that the man may just be an archetypal image of a generalized person that people might see in dreams, or that the man might actually be a manifestation of literal God. The site went viral in 2009, and over time, more than 2 million people visited the site, and more than 10,000 people apparently contacted them to share stories and drawings of the man. But websites like 4chan and Reddit would doubt the story, and after looking into thisman.org, it was found to be hosted by a company that also owned a domain called GorillaMarketing.it, a fake advertising agency that designed subversive hoaxes and created weird art projects exploring pornography, politics, and advertising. And like thisman.org, it was also owned by, you guessed it, Andrea Nutella. Later in 2010, Nutella confirmed that the whole thing was a hoax and that he had created it as a publicity stunt, although he never confirmed whether this man was for a commercial purpose or not. The Thunderbird is a fixture in native North American lore that is considered to be a supernatural being of great power and strength. The bird is said to create thunder by flapping its wings and lightning by flashing its eyes. The Thunderbird is represented in art, songs, and stories across many different native tribes and cultures across North America. Zapdos, the electric bird Pokemon, is actually based on the Thunderbird, and you thought I was done with Pokemon, didn't you? Typhon, we briefly mentioned earlier, has the mate of Echidna. Uh, hi baby. <laughs> Typhon is a serpentine-like giant and is one of the deadliest beings in all of Greek mythology. He is the son of Gaia and Tartarus, the personifications of the Earth itself and the underworld, respectively. At one point, Typhon attempted to overthrow Zeus for control of the cosmos, but Zeus was able to defeat him with his classic thunderbolts in a final cataclysmic battle. Typhon was then cast out into Tartarus, which is technically both a deity and a section of Hades. It's used as a dungeon for the wicked and as a prison for the titans. 
Upsweep is another anomalous sound like Julia that was also recorded by the NOAA. This one though isn't attributed to iceberg shifting and actually still remains unidentified. It's a continuous narrow band sweeping sound that lasts a few seconds at a time, and it can be recorded throughout the Pacific Ocean. The odd thing about it is that the sound seems to be seasonal, with its peaks being in spring and autumn. Some speculate that it may be due to underwater volcanic activity, but this hasn't been confirmed yet. But anyway, here's the sound. Yeah, I can see why people might think hell exists when there's shit like this out there. Not much to be said about werecats, to be honest. They're literally just the cat versions of werewolves. Some stories involve witches turning into house cats, or others that are more bestial and turn into humanoid versions of like tigers, lions, etc. But watch out, because they're often spotted at Comic-Con. The Woolly Mammoth is the only entry on our list so far that actually existed at one point, but its inclusion is due to the fact that the mammoth is still reportedly seen throughout remote tundra regions like Siberia and northern Canada, even though they went extinct around 4,000 years ago. Here's the most modern day evidence of a Woolly Mammoth that we have, but most experts seem to agree that this is most likely just a bear uh, with a fish in its mouth. But the footage is lower resolution than the original Bigfoot footage, so I guess we may never truly know. The Yowie is a creature that is supposedly in the outback of Australia. They're hairy ape-like creatures with sizes ranging from 7 to 11 feet tall. It has many, many different names across the continent that I'm not even going to begin to try and pronounce. But it's basically just another variant of Bigfoot, but in Australia. And the final entry on today's tier is Yuki Ona, or Snow Woman. She's another yokai in Japanese folklore that's been depicted in a lot of art and literature, going back to ancient Japan appearing to villagers on snowy nights. Some say she's a snow spirit, while others say she's the spirit of a woman who may have met her fate in the cold. One legend speaks of a beautiful woman who came to visit a man in the snowy night and became his wife of the woman's own desire. The woman would always refuse to go into the bath until one day the man forced her to bathe. But when she got into the bath, she disappeared and left behind thin and fragmented floating icicles. Most stories involving Yuki Ona are stories of sorrow, and it's thought that this started from lonely people like childless older couples or single men in mountain villages that heard sounds of blizzards knocking on their door, and they would fantasize about visitors until realizing that they're still alone. Christ, that's a bummer to end on. Well, that's it. This video ended up being a lot longer than I thought, but it was a really fun one to do. Uh, but keep in mind that this was only the second tier of the iceberg I'm currently working on, so if you like this one, then stay tuned for a lot more. We cover everything here from folklore to true crime and everything in between, so if that's your kind of thing and you feel so inclined, then please subscribe to the channel so you can always stay up to date with everything that goes bump in the nights. Alright, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.